Welcome to the, to the May 20th, 2024 City Council meeting. Please uh, silence any cell phones. Uh, we don't need them going off here or any time during the meeting or when you speak. Um, <laughs> given that, tonight's invocation and pledge will be led by Mr. Widden. Please stand. In 1838, a 28-year-old Abraham Lincoln gave a speech in Springfield, Illinois. The topic of Lincoln's speech was citizenship in a constitutional republic and threats to U.S. democracy. Lincoln discussed in glowing terms the political regime established by our founding fathers, but warned of a lack of respect for the rule of law. He asked his listeners, Shall we expect some transatlantic military giant to step the ocean and crush us out of blow? Never. All the armies of Europe, Asia combined, with all the treasures of the world in their military chest, with a Bonaparte for a commander, could not by force take a drink from the Ohio or make track in the Blue Ridge in a trial of combat lasting a thousand years. At what point then is the approach of danger to be expected? He answered, if it ever reaches, us, it must spring up amongst us. It cannot come from abroad. If destruction be our lot, we must ourselves be its author and finisher. For as a nation of free men, we will live throughout all time or surely die by suicide. What our greatest president said so eloquently, and I can only summarize is this. We as citizens must read and understand and practice our constitutional rights and have respect for the rule of law to ensure the survival of our republic. If we do this, we cannot fail. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mrs. Knight, could you please call the roll? Mr. Pierce? Present. Mr. Whitten? Here. Mr. Sievert? Present. Mrs. Marshall? Here. Mr. Schilling? Present. Mr. Phillips? Here. Mrs. Westfall? Here. Mr. Twiss? Mr. Motion to excuse Mr. Excuse Mr. Twiss. Second. Second. Motion to excuse Mr. Twiss by Mr. Phillips by and Mr. Schilling. Schilling. Please call the roll, Mrs. Knight. Mr. Whitten? Yes. Mr. Sievert? Yes. Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mrs. Westfall? Yes. Mr. Pierce? Yes. Mr. Twist is excused. Motion to excuse Mrs. Snee. Second. Motion by Mr. Phillips, Mrs. Snee. Seconded by, by Mr. Pierce. Mrs. Knight, can you please call the roll? Mr. Sievert? Yes. Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mrs. Westfall? Yes. Mr. Pierce? Yes. Mr. Whitten? Yes. Mrs. Snee is excused. Thank you. Mrs. Knight, could you please read the summary of the minutes of May 6, 2024, please? Minutes of Council, May 6, 2024. The outgoing members of the Mayor's Youth Council were recognized. A public hearing was held on Ordinance Number 018, 2024, regarding DRO provision amendment changes. Committee reports, Buildings and Utilities Committee recommended legislation be prepared, authorize a paying the amount of $900,000 associated with sewer oversizing. Committee recommended legislation be prepared, authorizing the Director of Public Service and Safety to enter into a new water agreement with the Board of County Commissioners of Lima County. Community and Economic Development Committee recommended legislation be prepared, extending by 180 days the moratorium on granting permits allowing adult use cannabis operators to establish in the city. Finance Committee reported that rec uh, legislation be prepared for the resolution of the Necessity for the South Stanfield Road Reconstruction Project Phase 2. Committee recommended legislation be prepared, establishing the 2024 Downtown Facade Improvement Grant Improvement Program in the amount of $120,000. Resolution number R19-2024, Water Agreement with Miami County, was given first reading and adopted. Resolution number R2024, Necessity of Replacing Sidewalks and Shared Youth, youth Path use path on South Stanfield Road, first reading and adopted. Resolution number R2124, facade improvement grant program established, first reading and adopted. Ordinance number 018, 2024, 
amendments to the zoning code regarding the downtown riverfront overlay district was given public hearing and second reading. Ordinance number 019, 2024, a moratorium was given first reading and was adopted. Ordinance number 020, 2024, make payment regarding oversizing uh, for sewer line for Addison Landing was given first reading adopted. Following various comments, council adjourned at 7.52 p.m. Motion to accept the minutes. Second. Motion to accept the minutes, Mr. Phillips, seconded by Mr. Sievert. Please call the roll, Mrs. Knight. Mrs. Marshall. Yes. Mr. Schilling. Yes. Mr. Phillips. Yes. Mrs. Westfall. Yes. Mr. Pierce. Yes. Mr. Whitten. Yes. Mr. Sievert. Yes. Minutes are approved. All right. Committee reports. We'll start tonight with building and utilities. Mr. Pierce. All right. The subject amendment for professional service agreement with, agreement. Jones, with Jones and Henry Engineers. Limited for additional design of the water treatment plant chlorine gas project. Summary report. This committee met May 13th to consider an amendment to the professional service agreement with Jones and Henry Engineers Limited of Cincinnati, Ohio to perform additional building code design for the chlorine gas conversion project at the water treatment plant and an additional cost not to exceed $32,640 for a total agreement cost not to exceed $259,070. The additional design work is required to comply with the updated 2024 building code regulations, including an emergency egress code analysis and fire rating of the abutting wall between the new chlorine room and the remaining portion of the administration area to minimize the scope of potential fire sprinkling requirements. Recommendation, it is the recommendation of this committee that legislation be authorized, the, authorizing the Director of Public Service and Safety to enter into an amendment to the Professional Service Agreement with Jones and Henry Engineers Limited of Cincinnati, Ohio to perform the additional design related to the chlorine gas conversion project at the water treatment plant at a cost not to exceed $32,640 for a total agreement cost not to exceed $259,070. Respectfully submitted by Councilman Bobby Phillips, <coughs> Councilwoman Lynn Snee, and myself, <coughs> Chair Men of Buildings and Utilities Committee, Samuel J. Pierce. Questions or comments? Finance, Mr. Sieber. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this committee met May 13 to discuss increasing the contract authorization for the curbside recycling program. As the only bid received exceeded the authorization, city staff advised that it continues to be more cost effective to contract for the services and that the recycling fees continue to support the cost of the contract. It was discussed that staff would continue to monitor and evaluate the cost comparison of continuing the status quo, refuse collection in-house, contracting for the recycling, performing both services in-house, or contracting for both services or any other viable option prior to implementing either of the two-year extensions as well as the long-term, as well as for long-term evaluation purposes. However, it is noted that contracting for curbside recycling for the full five years should be accomplished without an increase to the residential refuse collection fee. It is the recommendation of this committee that legislation be prepared, increasing the contract award authorization for the curbside recycling program for a three-year period with up to two one-year mutually agreeable options as follows. Contract year authorization 2425, 570,000. Contract year 2526, 605K. Contract year 2627, 647K. Contract year option 2728, 685K. Contract year 2829, 730K. And that the current contract expires in May. Committee supports emergency legislation. Respectfully submitted, Mr. Schilling, Ms. Westfall, and myself as chairman of the Finance Committee. Any questions? I'd, I'd have to kind of do a quick comment. Yeah. Um, I, I don't want to take a lot of time, but I do want to thank. Uh, 
uh, City Service Director Patrick Titterington, who was in Europe while we were debating this and uh, concurred that we could do this without uh, increasing fees. Uh, the gentleman to my right, I spent probably 40 minutes on the phone with to concur that this is something that we could do. And I most um, specifically want to thank Jill Rhodes, who spent probably a whole morning uh, dropping what she was doing to uh, work on this so that our presentation was um, informative and correct when we presented it that night. So I appreciate the efforts of all those people and all staff. Moving to the law and ordinance, Mr. Whidden. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this committee met on May 13th to review the recommendation of the Planning Commission that zoning code amendments be approved to provide updates to the downtown riverfront overlay DRO district. Council has established a moratorium on the applications in the DRO district, pending review and recommendation recommended amendments regarding the DRO district. These amendments are, con are contained in ordinance number 018-2024. The, the committee supports zoning, zoning code amendments recommended by the Troy Planning Commission regarding amendments to the DRO district and recommends that ordinance number 018-2024 be adopted. Upon the effective date of the ordinance, this moratorium would cease. Respectfully stated by Mrs. Marshall, Mr. Twist, and myself as chair. Questions? Comments? Mr. Whitten, you're going to uh, sub for Mr. Uh, Twist and cover safety and health. All right, well, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this committee met on May 13th to discuss the approval of the Miami County 911 plan. Uh, as required by Section 128 of the Ohio Revised Code, the Miami County 911 plan has been reviewed, updated, and approved by the Miami County Board of Commissioners. The county has requested the approval of the uh, political subdivisions covered by the plan. It is the recommendation of this committee that legislation be prepared authorizing Miami County 911. Uh, be prepared approving the Miami County 911 plan. Based on the date by which the county has asked for approval, this committee supports emergency legislation. This is respectively stated by Mr. Siebert, myself, and Mr. Twist. That's Joe. Questions on that? All righty. Streets and sidewalks. Mr. Phillips. Thank you, sir. Uh, this committee met May 13 to consider the ordinance of assessment for phase 15 of the sidewalk improvement program. Phase 15 work has been completed for the area described in the detailed report. No objections were received from the recently published notice. The next step of the process is for council to enact the ordinance of assessment. And it is the recommendation of this committee that legislation be prepared authorizing the ordinance of assessment for phase 15 of the sidewalk improvement program. And this is respectfully submitted by Mr. Schilling, Mrs. Westfall, and myself as chair. Comments, questions? Thank you very much. Citizens, there uh, want to speak on anything that we have on the agenda tonight. Agenda tonight, uh, uh, resolutions, ordinances, committee reports. Uh, you're, please step forward, give your name and address. Uh, two minute time limit at this portion. And Mr. Kerber is our designated timekeeper. Okay. Uh, my name is Deb Hogshead. I live at 421 South Plum Street here in Troy. And I want to comment on the curbside recycling. I'm glad the, the Finance Committee is recommending that the city contract with Rumpke for continued recycling, even though Rumpke was the only company uh, presenting a bid. I certainly don't want to see recyclable items going into landfills. I also want to suggest, as the city moves forward with a new contract and evaluates the cost and efficiency of the recycling program, that city staff and council explore ways to encourage local retailers and residents to reduce their reliance on plastic, especially single-use plastic. Cuyahoga County's Department of Sustainability has a program that might serve as a model for our community. It provides resources to help reta retailers reduce plastic bag usage and to encourage shoppers to switch to reusable shopping bags. The program uh, called Bring Your Own Bags can be viewed at Cuyahoga.gov slash sustainability slash initiative slash B-Y-O-B-A-G. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to resolutions. Mrs. Knight, could you please read, please R. read R22-2024, please. Resolution number R22-2024. 
resolution amending resolution number R31, 2023, authorizing the Director of Public Service and Safety of the City of Troy, Ohio, to enter into an amendment to the Agreement for Professional Services with Jones and Henry Engineers Limited of Cincinnati, Ohio, for design services for the chlorine gas conversion project at the water treatment plant of the City of Troy, Ohio. This would add an additional uh, cost of $32,640 for the amendment for a total agreement of $259,070, first reading. Move to suspend. Second. Move, <clears throat> move to suspend the readings by Mr. Phillips, seconded by Mr. Schilling. Please call the roll, Mrs. Knight. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mrs. Westfall? Yes. Mr. Pierce? Yes. Mr. Whitten? Yes. Mr. Siebert? Yes. Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Move to adopt. Second. Motion to adopt by Mr. Phillips, seconded by Mr. Siebert. Please call the roll, Mrs. Knight. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mrs. Westfall? Yes. Mr. Pierce? Yes. Mr. Whitten? Yes. Mr. Siebert? Yes. Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. The resolution is adopted. Will you please read resolution R202024? Resolution number R232024. Resolution amending resolution number R172024, authorizing the Director of Public Service and Safety of the City of Troy, Ohio, to advertise for bids and enter into a contract for the curbside recycling program and declaring an emergency. Uh, this sets the limits uh, for the contract at various amounts for the coming five years, and this is the first reading. Move to suspend. Second. <clears throat> Move to suspend the readings by Mr. Whitten, seconded by Mr. Schilling. Mrs. Knight, please call the roll. Mrs. Westfall? Yes. Mr. Mr. Pierce? Yes. Mr. Whitten? Yes. Mr. Sievert? Yes. Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Move to adopt. Motion, motion to adopt by Mr. Whitten, seconded by Mr. Mrs. Knight, could you please call the roll? Mr. Pierce? Yes. Mr. Whitten? Yes. Mr. Siebert? Yes. Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mrs. Westfall? Yes. Resolution is adopted. Could you please read resolution R24-2024, Mrs. Knight? Resolution number R24-2024. Resolution approving the Miami County 911 final plan and declaring an emergency. This is the first reading. Uh, this is declared an emergency as the county has requested approval of the plan by other entities in the county by May 24th. First reading. Move to suspend. Second. Motion to suspend readings by Mr. Pierce, seconded by Mrs. Westfall. Mrs. Westfall, Mrs. Knight, will you please call the roll? Mr. Whitten? Yes. Mr. Siebert? Yes. Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mrs. Westfall? Yes. Mr. Pierce? Yes. Move to adopt. Second. Move to adopt by Mr. Phillips, seconded by Mr. Whitten. Mrs. Knight, could you please call the roll? Mr. Siebert? Yes. Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mrs. Westfall? Yes. Mr. Pierce? Yes. Mr. Whitten? Yes. Resolution is adopted. Moving on to ordinances. Mrs. Knight, will you please read ordinance 018 2024? Ordinance number 018 2024, an ordinance amending sections 1143.13, 1143.14, 1143.15, 1143.18 of the Zoning Code of the City of Troy, Ohio. These are amendments to the Downtown Riverfront Overlay District as has been recommended by the Troy Planning Commission. And if this uh, legislation is approved, the moratorium on applications regarding the DRO District will sunset. Third reading. Move to adopt. Second. To adopt the ordinance by Mr. Phillips. Second by Mr. Pierce. Mrs. Knight, please call the roll. Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mrs. Westfall? Yes. Mr. Pierce? 
Yes. Mr. Whitten? Yes. Mr. Siebert? Yes. The ordinance is adopted. Mrs. Knight, could you read ordinance 021 2024, please? Ordinance number 021 2024, ordinance levying assessments for phase 15 of the sidewalk improvement program. This is the first reading at this point adoption. Uh, the property owners will be given notice of the amount of the assessment. First reading. Motion to suspend three reading rule. Motion to suspend by Mr. Whitten. Second. Seconded by Mr. Phillips. Mrs. Knight, please call the roll. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mrs. Westfall? Yes. Mr. Pierce? Yes. Mr. Whitten? Yes. Mr. Siebert? Yes. Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Second. Motion to adopt by Mr. Pierce, seconded by Mr. Phillips. Mrs. Knight, please call the roll. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mrs. Westfall? Yes. Mr. Pierce? Yes. Mr. Whitten? Yes. Mr. Siebert? Yes. Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Ordinance is adopted. Communications announcements. Mrs. Knight, are there any? No, sir. This week? None this week. Mayor Oda. Mayor Oda. Any comments today? Yes, just a reminder that Memorial Day is a week from today and that we will be um, having a short... Is that a week from today? Yes, it is. Monday. Yeah. Um, short ceremony at 11 o'clock at the Riverside Cemetery, right at the opening to the cemetery. There will be a stage set up, and then we'll go out to Soldier Circle for a short ceremony, about an hour total. Okay, thank you. And that is put on by the American Legion. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, Director of Public Service and Safety, Mr. Titterton. Uh, so just to follow up on Memorial Day, I, I always get the uh, glamorous part of the, that announcement with holidays, and that is that we are closed at uh, City Hall. The uh, facilities are closed. Uh, we do not have any delay in refuse and recycling. We will post something to our uh, media sources to remind people of that. Uh, the second uh, announcement is that on Wednesday night, the 22nd, uh, we will, ha at, starting at 6 o'clock, will be a, another uh, public meeting on the streetscape uh, design work that's being done downtown. That will be at the uh, Bravo Room. Again, it will be at 6 o'clock. Uh, we did have a, a good-sized crowd, maybe a little on the small side uh, the last time, but they were engaged. Uh, we were a little pressed for time, um, and so uh, uh, one of the concerns was being pressed for time that not all of the, uh, the citizen questions and comments were, were able to be logged publicly. Um, if council uh, has any questions uh, before that and needs some clarification, just uh, feel free to, uh, to reach out to me and, and staff and uh, We'll get those answers uh, as, as quickly as we can. Uh, if there is another uh, presentation, they may tweak the presentation that they had the last time. Uh, we will have that on our website as well. Uh, that's all I have. Thank you. City Law Director, Mr. Kerber. Mr. President, I have no comments this evening. <laughs> City Auditor, Mr. Friggy. Thank you, Mr. President. I have nothing at this time. Mr. Siebert, have anything? No, thank you. Mrs. Westfall? No. Mr. Schilling? I do not. Mrs. Marshall? I do not. Mr. Whitten? I, I appreciate being called out individually. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> That's a new thing. Yeah. Mr. Pierce? Thank you. Mr. Phillips? No, thank you, sir. Other than that, uh, I, would uh, just, I would just ask the people a week, what, a week from next, this Friday is there a wonderful festival? If you're traveling, please be patient with our construction. Slow down because there's going to be a lot more traffic. Thank you. Citizens' comments. Any com oh, I'm sorry, staff. Staff, no comment? Mm -hmm. Citizens, any comment from the public? Come up. Name, name and address and take as you want. My name is Deb Hogshead. I live at 421 South Plum Street here in Troy. 
I spoke earlier about my support for a contract with Rumpke for recycling. Now I want to remind folks, the council, the staff, citizens of Troy, that we can't recycle our way out of problems caused by plastics. Those problems include, but are not limited to, unsightly litter <coughs> along streets in Troy, in fields outside of Troy, and in the Great Miami River that flows through Troy. Subsequent pollution of our oceans and hazards to marine life and even the fish we eat, the ingestion of microplastics into our bodies, the leaching of toxic substances into water sources, <coughs> and pollution that occurs from the production of plastics, which are petroleum-based. There are certainly products we need, plastic products that we do need, but there's a lot we don't, particularly single-use plastics that make life convenient but wind up causing more harm than good. I'm not perfect, but I do everything I can to reduce my consumption of plastic. As often as I remember, I take reusable bags with me when I shop. I won't buy individual apples or baking potatoes wrapped in plastic, and I refuse to purchase water in plastic bottles unless it's abs an absolute emergency. Water is necessary for life. Water from our taps should be clean, and water shouldn't cost us any more than what we already pay for water hookups to our homes. According to research, of the 35 billion water bottles Americans empty each year, only 12% get recycled. I've recently read that Rumpke now accepts hard to recycle plastics if we consumers place them in orange plastic bags sold by Hefty as part of its Renew program. A package of 20 orange plastic bags cost about $8. There's merit in the program, but still it concerns me because we need less plastic in our environment, not more. Citizens need to encourage our elected representatives to pass legislation at the local, state, and national levels that helps us reduce the production and use of plastics, particularly single-use plastics that harm the environment and threaten public health. One thing likely to stand in the way, aside from our love affair with convenience, is the influence the, plastic in, the plastics industry has over state legislation that prevents local communities like Troy, or Tip City, or Piqua from banning such things as single-use plastic bags. With support from the Ohio Chemistry Technology Council and other retail and industry groups, the Ohio Senate in 2021 made permanent a temporary ban on local taxation of plastic bags. These corporate entities, functioning from a profit motive, were able to keep local governments from passing ordinances designed to protect public health and the environment. As a result, Ohio communities like Cuyahoga County and the city of Cincinnati had to delay implementation of ordinances they had passed to reduce consumer consumption of single-use plastic bags. This is another reason why I support the movement to end the misguided doctrines of corporate constitutional rights and money of speech. Thank you. Thank you. Other members of the audience? Uh, yes, good evening. Uh, my name is Jonathan Newman. I live at 194 Little John Road uh, here in Troy. And uh, I'm here tonight just to uh, introduce myself. I've had the pleasure of talking to a number of you privately. I'm friends with some of you, um, but um, I would like to get to know the rest of you. I just want to open the door, make the introduction. I'm running for state representative for District 80. That's Miami County and Southern Dark County. And uh, if there is a positive, and I look forward to a positive result in the general election this November, uh, then if Lord willing, taking office in 2025, uh, I look forward to having an open and uh, open door and good communication with you guys uh, to learn from you what you all are facing and uh, doing for our, our city and how I might uh, not only learn from you but partner uh, with what you're doing in the legislature. Um, I thank you all for what you do. Uh, uh, the whole matter you've just 
led our city through with the, with the building and the closed street. Um, you couldn't make everybody happy. It seemed like nobody was happy. <laughs> but uh, I'm happy that we have folks like you that do good work, and thank you for it. Uh, I'm sure it was uh, a lot of trying hours for you all, so thank you. Uh, my family has, we raised our family here in Troy. Uh, my wife and I have been here for 25 years. Our children grew up in Troy. This is a wonderful town, and good people like you all help keep it that way. So thank you for what you do. And uh, I look forward to my role of public service working in partnership with you and our other municipalities and other state reps across the state uh, to do good work. And so I don't want to take much of your time. I just want to make the introduction. Thank you for letting me come tonight, and I look forward to talking a lot more. So uh, I will leave my card uh, with you guys so that uh, you all can have it. My number's on it. Uh, please call anytime. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. President, if I may. Yes, Mr. Phillips. I'm sorry. I just forgot about it when we were going through the council here. Um, I had the opportunity to use the Maker's Lab uh, today and last Friday. And I'd just like to recommend anyone that has any kind of little project, whether it's printing a T-shirt, doing laser printing, cutting, uh, inventing something with their 3D printer and, um, and their 3D scanner, sewing. I mean, there is a ton of stuff up there that, um, that is open to the public, and it is exceedingly inexpensive in comparison to going out and buying a part. If you have a part that's broken in your refrigerator and you can print it, they can scan it for you, uh, they will help you scan it. Um, and one of their employees, Isaiah Shannon, who I've gone to church with and known since he was this high, uh, was an outstanding resource and actually walked through everything with me, so it was outstanding. So if you have any thing you want to do with the Maker's Lab, I mean, imagination is your only limitation with that. So. I, Kudos to the library for that uh, particular program. So thank you. And if you haven't been, just go see what it is. See what it is. It's incredible. Anything else? No one. Then our next meeting will be on June 3rd at 7 o'clock right here. We are adjourned.